Hey guys, John here from fly8mikealpha.com and today we're going to be talking about soft field landings. So landing in a soft field, landing on grass, um, any sort of sand, anything where you're going to kind of sink in, there's going to be a lot of drag on the landing gear. We'll take a look at a couple uh, soft field landings here and go over the proper procedure of getting it done. So let's look at how you set up for a soft field landing. It's going to be one of the easier landings you do on your private pilot check ride because per the ACS, the certification standards, the, the minimums you have to meet, you actually don't have a limitation of where you can touch down. You can use a much larger portion of the runway. You're just trying to bring the airplane down nice and gently at a slow, shallow descent rate, a shallow descent angle, landing with full flaps, touching down softly and keeping as much weight off the wheels for as long as possible as you roll out down the runway. So to do this, we're going to be approaching with full flaps. We're going to be coming down with a little power in, and you're going to be using the normal approach speed for a full flap landing. You'll hold the airplane off, allowing it to slowly settle down to the ground once you're in ground effect, and you may even give a small bump of power just before the wheels touch to give that little extra cushion to cushion the descent rate and make the mains touch down nice and softly. This also serves another purpose of getting the engine spooled up a little bit so that if you do touch the mains down and you find out, whoa, it's way softer than you thought, here we can see a normal grass field. It's actually pretty hard. It's not a very soft field. When we talk about soft fields, we're talking about very soft grass. It just rained. Maybe it's springtime up north. It's muddy. The sort of stuff where the wheels are going to sink in several inches into the ground and the airplane is going to rapidly decelerate where it's going to put a lot of strain on the nose gear, where it's really going to bite in, and where you could potentially hurt and damage the airplane if it's a super soft field, or you may actually get stuck and not be able to get the airplane out for many weeks or many months after that, depending on what time of the year it is. So that's why it's important to touch down with that little extra bump of power, just so if you do happen to touch down and the wheels really do bite in, you can add full power, go around, and find some other place to land. So to recap, our normal soft field procedure, it's going to be coming in with full flaps, a nice shallow gentle descent rate, coming down to the ground, allowing the airplane to slowly settle, making a nice soft landing, holding the nose wheel up, bumping it just a hair power just before the wheels touch, and then of course bringing power all the way to idle when the wheels do touch and you want to stay on the ground. And then leaving your flaps to full and holding the controls full aft, working them all the way back, fully back, to keep as much weight off the nose as possible as you roll out down the runway. Leaving the flaps down to full will also help support more weight on the wing rather than weight on the wheels. You also wanna think of a few things when you're on a soft field of like never stopping. So if it is truly soft and you notice you're using a ton of power, say like 1500 RPM, just to taxi around and you're only going a normal taxi speed, I would be very hesitant to actually stop the aircraft at all because once it settles into the muck, it may not get going again. You may be at full power and just pulling up dirt and stones and a lot of junk into your prop and damaging the propeller rather than actually getting the airplane to go anywhere, maybe totally stuck. Other things to think about are damaging your propeller on a soft field. So there's gonna be some loose debris. It could be some loose gravel, stones, dirt, whatever it is. You wanna use power to taxi, but be cautious about using too much power. And that's why you wanna keep the airplane rolling. You don't wanna be starting and stopping using a ton of power to get moving. You wanna be cautious of how much power you're applying so that you're not pulling a lot of debris up into the prop as you're taxing around. Overall, it's a pretty simple maneuver. Be very gentle on the brakes. Don't get the airplane slow. Don't get stuck in the mud. That's all there really is to it. If you have any questions on this at all, leave them in the comments box below. We'd be more than happy to answer them for you. Make sure you check out our Patreon page. We greatly appreciate all the support you guys give us. Like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. So give us a thumbs up here. Subscribe to our channel. Keep up with our latest episodes as they come out each week. If you have more questions about private pilot things, check out our free online ground school at flyatmikealpha.com. Lots of other online courses there too, besides just the private pilot one. All sorts of courses for all sorts of pilots. As always, guys, if you cannot fly every day, then flyatmikealpha.com. We will see you all next time.